Hi, welcome to the Future Farmer Show. My name is Orisha Jeremy David, and it is awesome to be here. It's such a privilege that you join us on this journey towards Zambia's total transformation through agriculture and agribusiness. On the Future Farmer Show today, we're going to be talking about why do we have this program? Why do we do the Future Farmer Show? Are we just trying to be on television, creating content for you to entertain? What is it about? We'll talk about that. So today it's bumper. Today it's a lot of goodies. And please join us. So we're looking today, like I said, at the vision of the future from a show. Something else we notice going on, because this is a show that is market oriented. It has you in mind. It has Zambia in mind. And we realize we've been talking about farming, but the rains have, have been delayed, if you like. And um, we wonder where the rain is. And we have been talking to it to come. But... What is that farmer going through right now that the rains have been delayed? What's the mind? What's the pressure? What's the risk in agribusiness on this thing? So we will visit and reinforce the area of planning in. And then we will also look at what is it that our partners have to offer to us. And we'll be talking to Namonga on what the future farm, Agco, agriculture company what they have for us and then we'll come back to conclude on today's program we have our agronomist and farm specialist to be talking through to us on different concepts so here we go don't go away we just started it's going to be a wonderful program helping you become a better farmer let's go into it now The Future Farm is really about generating knowledge and knowledge about farming. How can you make knowledge more profitable? How can knowledge work? Not just provide food on your table, but also to be a business. Because we know that farming is really the employment of over 60% of Zambians and actually over 40% of Africans. The benefits um, of having a mechanization on our farms, quite a number of them. Uh, one of them is uh, you have good quality of work on your farm. So to the existing farmers, uh, what is key uh, with, with farming and the future of farming is that uh, you need to be knowledgeable. Welcome back. Welcome. Thank you for joining us and staying with us. Now we go into the program itself and we're looking at what and why do we have this program we call the Future Farmer Show. The Future Farmer Show basically is saying we have an opportunity in agribusiness, in agriculture, and how to use agriculture to fulfill our dreams as a nation, as individuals. And we feel that we need to stimulate, we need to grow, we need to bring about that thinking, that mindset to build a critical mass of people in agribusiness. So agribusiness is a vehicle that can take most African nations, over 25% of their GDP is from agriculture. But we haven't learned to go from agriculture to agribusiness. A few countries are doing it big time, but most of us are still in the place where we just produce for sale and not produce to, to, to grow the place. So we want to understand the concept. And with me to do that is our agronomist from ACO, the future um, agriculture company, ACO. And she is a farm specialist and she's always been with us. So welcome, Yushila Zulu. Thank you for joining us today. Always on the program. Thank you to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know you are busy, but you made this time for us. Really, really appreciate it. Sheila, tell us, you and I had a discussion. We've had this discussion, and we talk about the partnership working on this program between ACO, agriculture company, and the leadership farm. And we said to you that we grow human beings, leaders, to reach their full potential. And there's that synergy, there's that we walk in tandem, there's that agreement, there's that place where we meet. Tell us about, as an agronomist, what is it you do with seeds? A lot of people have genetically modified seeds today, but what do you do? There's so much money going into that area of 
agriculture, agribusiness. What do we do? <clears throat> How do we get seeds to be resilient? Again, this program is talking a lot about the lack of rains. And it's not because rains are not going to come, but for now. So what is your job? Explain it. People watch. What do you do in this <clears throat> sector, in this industry? Thank you so much. So with the seeds, we have a selection process. So this is a process where we want to select the best. And like you said, this, this can be similar with human beings. So we want to select the best. For us to do that, we have to define the parameters that we want to see in this seed because it has to achieve certain objectives. So as in agronomy, in farming, you look at you pay attention to seeds, you pay attention to a lot of critical factors. Critical factors, yes. To give you success. To, to, to give you success. So you already define the success at the very start. So again, that goes to planning. To yes. You define your success at, at the beginning. At the beginning. Okay. And then you work through that process because you, 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 you define what you want to achieve. And as you are working through that process, you keep referring to what all the parameters, the factors, what has Explain to Explain to us what these parameters are. So for, on the side of seed, uh, the selection process, when we define the parameters, this can be drought, it, it should be drought tolerant. So meaning that when we have less rainfall, this seed should still be able to perform. So basically what you are saying is you actually train the seed. Yeah, we actually train you, the you, seed. So like we actually you, Plant you, it. you give it training, like they train human beings. They train human you beings. You train the to seed to perform at a level. You train the seed to perform under certain conditions. Yeah, so that it's able to withstand, but then some natural uh, factors will be at play to actually give that seed that potential. So you tend to. Explain that to me. Natural factors giving the seed potential. So seeds have potential. It has potential because it's living. It has mm -hmm. potential. So it's waiting for the favorable conditions to bring out that potential. It's potential. And it's the same with the human beings that they have to, the human being should be developed to see the potential, to see what they can achieve. Okay. And it's the same with the seed. So when we have the parameters to say, okay, this should be drought tolerant, we grow it with less moisture and then let it perform under those so circumstances. I want the seed to be drought tolerant. Yes. So I expose the seed to, to drought-like drought conditions. conditions yes, exactly. So that the seed goes through those conditions and it's path of evolution, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it it's able to actually itself. adapt and be so able to withstand. So the seed is intelligent. Yes. Okay, please go on. So that is one of the things. And then uh, you also look at uh, disease, disease okay. pressure. So you subject that seed to disease condition. It may be disease condition because sometimes, most of the times, we put up control measures for disease, but then you don't do that and just let it go through the full process of infestation. So sometimes, maybe that's why sometimes we drive on the road and you see some farms and you see some people put their names on that farm, but when you look at the crop, it's looking, is this a farm? <laughs> Yellow, so they are actually exactly, exposing yeah. so, so the seed yeah, it could be one to of, something like to, that. To those conditions, yes. So you may have drought, you may have disease, you may also have pests. Uh, there are certain pests that are devastating. So you may also have pests where you subject it to those conditions. So you are where building the seed to be resilient, to be resistant, it, and to perform in spite of those in things. spite of all of that and that is done through a process because every season has different weather conditions so you don't want to rely on one weather condition because when you have this seed you want to be sure that when it goes to the market you've tested it and you can confidently say this is your disease pressure level this is your pest level pressure this is your your your, your drought tolerance level so you do it over time and um, minimum five years but i think up to seven years so the doing... seeds the seeds we plant and we get this great harvest from every such seed has gone through particularly the seeds that have gone from the seed companies they have gone through this training period so they can now tell you this seed is going to produce because we have tested it we know what it can do yeah we have tested it and it's not in one location so um, for instance, a seed, 
meant for the Zambian uh, farming community. It will be tested in different parts of the country because uh, you may wish to know that Zambia has three ecological zones. So these different ecological zones will also have different rain pattern and distribution. So you want to have tests across the country such that when you get your sample, it's representative that this seed will perform in this manner because you get from all representative points across the country. And therefore, when this seed is done, you can now tell and say, this yield will come. And you talked about creating male seeds, female seeds. Tell me about that. What's that about? Yeah, so, so what you end up with um, are, the, are the parents. So those parents... So those parents are the ones that... Are the ones with When the you subject it, it, you trained it, it performed better than other seeds. You separate it to the next... You is separate it to the next, yes, until you get to the final. So those are parents. That is not what is going to the market. Those are parents. So you use the parents now to multiply the babies that we are going to dress and so, pack. So even seeds bring forth after their kind. Yes. Okay, so you've trained it with drought. You've trained it with disease. You've trained it with pests. You've trained it in the three ecological zones. It has withstood the pressure. It's now like a diamond seed now, we stand in pressure. And then you now use it to produce seeds you can sell to other people. Exactly, so these parents will be male and female. So you find that you, won't, you may not have all the traits from one. So it's a combination of these two. So you may have the height, you may have a higher yield on one, you may have a drought tolerance on one and uh, maybe uh, disease tolerance so you are combining all of these so these are not from one so that's why we cross them now to give you the baby which should have both okay yeah and why we're bringing this and to the viewer why we're bringing this to you is for you to understand the partnership we have with agriculture company ACO. ACO has the specialization in the area of farming cropping training the seeds working with industry partners to bring the best yield. And we are coming to work with them because our job, that's why we're called the leadership farm, to train the people that do the farming. So actually what you do is what we do at the leadership farm. Because the leadership farm is, regardless of farming, regardless of the opportunities, without the farmer, without people wanting to farm, nothing will come out of the ground. The potential of Zambia is based on the potential of the Zambian. Therefore, you find that a lot of us drink so much. Just like you do for the seed, we've been cropped to drink under pressure. So somebody drinks like two crates of beer or something. They were trained. It, was, it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen overnight. So they became it's, the parent. It's a process, yes. And they start reproducing after So the, the body now has kind. adapted the to body that has adapted. and it's able to withstand that amount of drink. And a lot of that is done by media. A lot of that is done because we keep pumping people with things every day for 30 years, 40 years. They wake up every morning. They go to bed. They're watching television. They're listening to radio. So we're, we're, we're grooming them. Yes. We're priming them. So the seed to develop Zambia, we talk about Zambia so much and our potential. And we love what our government is doing, trying to bring about this mindset change. Very gradually, they are trying to weed and to begin to put seed and say, this is our future. But that won't happen if we don't start doing the same things you do with seed, identifying that the Zambian, every Zambian is the seed. So at the leadership farm, what we do is this. We take the human being. You see, where we are today is where we've been trained. What we are performing is what we've been trained to do. So at the Leadership Farm, this is why you have the Future Farmer Show. The Future Farmer Show is here to bring information, to bring inputs into the life of the viewer. And from the viewer, because we're talking to everybody, we don't even know who we're talking to. But from who we are talking to very soon, mothers and fathers, male and female will be popping yeah. out. Because some people will get it and say, this is an opportunity. It's not a farming program. It's a program to raise an industry and a critical mass of transformative Zambians in the area of agribusiness. 
an agribusiness is so big. In fact, did you know that there's a projection by the UN and the World Bank that by 2030, agriculture will be a trillion dollar business in Africa. What that says to me is there's a huge opportunity for Africans to benefit. But most of the time you find that it is the foreigners that benefit from that opportunity. So we at the leadership firm say to ourselves, how can we get the majority of our people, Zambian youth, to embrace agriculture, agribusiness, by using these programs and these interactions to begin to grow, just like Akko does the seed, we recognize the Zambian is the seed for our future. And therefore, when we're on television, when we are doing this, we are saying this is our vehicle of planting, the medium by which we plant our future, the future of Zambia, into you, that if we begin to work together and we see the value and the opportunity in agribusiness, we actually can become Great. So, Sheila, what do you think? Again, it's something so I've teased you with. So, listening to you, yes. you have already identified the potential that this Zambian youth Huge. has. Yes. The way we identify the potential in the seed, and then we are able to foresee what it can So, be. we can predict our future if we create the right Zambian. Just like you can predict exactly, the yield. Exactly, yeah. It works the same way. So it, Thank you. Say it again, please. Say it again, because you're the expert. It works the same way. Because so as there's crop science, there's human science. Yeah, so you are doing the human science. So you've got the parameter. Yes. And then you want to give this out to the youth, to the Zambian, because you've got the to statistics the, there. Look at, look at who we're looking at. We're looking at the women. A lot of people think farming is a man thing. But the truth is this. Farming is a lot of times a woman thing. It, it's a woman thing, and traditionally, really, it's, it's the women who are Look doing at the, the youth. most of them. Uh, a lot of youth think that, oh, it's not, it's not something trendy to be a farmer. So they will go and wear a tie and suffer for, I'm applying for a job. Meanwhile, the biggest area, so you see urbanization. Urbanization, yeah. most of the young people are leaving yeah, yeah. the villages not knowing that the money is in their it's, backyard. It's actually in the backyard. Because they think that they'll go abroad, sorry, they'll go abroad to them is living wherever, to Lusaka. To, to Lusaka, yeah, from so whichever part of the country. So that's what it is. Yeah. So I leave Shangombo and I'm coming to Lusaka because I think there is gold in Lusaka. And some of us end up as street kids. But if this can go out, particularly hearing from professionals like you, we can change Exactly. Yeah. So and the, make them see if seeds have potential, we have more potential. Yeah, in the, in the human being. So if we can have this change of the mindset, understanding the potential, the resources that are available, because like you said, the money could be in Shangombo, but ha, is somebody able to see that? So if they don't have that mind, then they come to Lusaka. And then people, some people in Lusaka who, who are already enlightened, they'll go to Shangombo and make the money. And you see, the thing is this. Viewers, think about this. Most people, when they think about farming, they want to go and farm when they say they are retiring. They're not coming to farm when they are viral, viral, when they have energy, when they have creativity, because we feel that at that time, we are old. So you see somebody, how do you go and start farming when you retire? Retire means you've started to regress. So what we are saying is, don't retire and be a farmer. Be a farmer and never retire. Yeah, that's, the opportunity. that's a lifelong career. It's a lifelong yeah. career. Yeah. And the opportunities are there. So the problem is not Zambia. The problem is not our potential. The problem is the Zambian. The Zambian has yeah, been cropped. We, so if you can crop seed to withstand drought, to withstand pests, to withstand disease. disease, it means you can crop Zambians to withstand all the pressures. Because who succeeds is not the best. Who succeeds is the most resilient, the most adaptive, the most resourceful, and the most tenacious. Those are the things that bring success. Yeah, and, and you see with the seed, when we are selecting for all of those parameters, the bigger picture there is higher yield because a crop that is able to withstand all of those ultimately it gives you the higher the yield. So it's yield. the same with the individual. So they are able to adapt to different environments. They are able to, 
to use their minds, be creative, be innovative, but ultimately you want to grow produce them. Better. Yeah, produce better. So you find therefore that if you continue and you get your children and you get your household to sit here and watch with us when we are doing the Future Farmer Show, we're talking about the future of our nation. It means that by the end of this 13 weeks, 52 weeks, 13 weeks is a quarter, 52 weeks is a year. By the end of, you do it for seven years, five to seven years. By the end of this process, you find that very soon, opportunities, occupations, wealth, prosperity that you never thought you had will become your ultimate yield. Because this program is here to crop, is here to build the resilient Zambian, to show that Zambian the opportunity that if we can do this, we can change our own economy. And she says to us that you subject them to pressure. So pressure is not good. It's not bad. Pressure brings out the best. It, it brings out the best. And shows us who are the best. Yeah. So the cream rises to I the top. I think there's a common saying that pressure makes uh, yeah. diamonds. Diamonds. <laughs> exactly. Diamonds <laughs> are diamonds because they are just ordinary coal yeah, and that then, withstood pressure over time. And then they end up, yeah. And they end up having value. But in most cases, people want to be in their comfort zone. They want to go to they comfort want, zone. Yeah, they, they want, want to, to move comfort. to Lusaka. But very few things will grow in the comfort zone. For us in farming, comfort zone... Even for the, for the crops, you know, sometimes we, we won't give it fertilizer and just let it push through. And then we want the plant to think there's no fertilizer. I don't want to die. Let me survive. Yeah. So it's, it's a same and with And nothing people. wants to die. <laughs> nothing wants to and die. And do you know that the richest people you say in the world are people that did exactly this? They never had anybody giving them. Most of us look for this comfort place and we don't know that the environment we live in as Zambians actually gives us opportunity to bring out our potential. So at the leadership farm, we want to show that, give that opportunity and show how do I become that successful person in spite of my challenges, using the resources, the knowledge, the abilities that we get from all around and bringing it together to see how we can produce this Zambian that is resilient, that is resistant to drought. So that person is not going to come and say, oh, I don't have a sponsor. That person sees exactly. I can get something yeah. from the ground. That person doesn't come and say, about my younger neighbor. That person says, no, why wait for government? And that person won't say, I'm a girl. That person <laughs> will say, I'm a girl, or I'm old, or I'm young, I'm a youth. Um, we're waiting for government. So this is why we have the Future Farmer Show. This is why the Leadership Farm came up with this concept. And we are so privileged to have experts in agriculture and experts that will help us network industry partners to bring the whole spectrum of agriculture and opportunity of agribusiness. And we want you to partner with us because partner with us, what do you do watching this program? That partnership brings about the transformation of our nation. If you are ready to do that, then you understand the Future Farmer Show. We want you to be there every week. We want you to get your children to watch, your girls to watch, your relatives to watch. Every part of your family can contribute to the gross domestic product of your family through this program. So join us every Sunday. Now you know why we have the Future Farmer Show. Let's go to the next section of this program because we want to see how do we reinforce the idea of planning for farming? Let's go into that. God bless you. Thank you. Welcome to the Martin Richin Hagen Future Farm, best in Lusaka, Zambia. The Martin Richin Hagen Future Farm is a modern state of the art facility offering education and training in mechanized sustainable agriculture for farmers in Zambia and Africa. We offer facilities such as lecture rooms, student accommodation, and a state-of-the-art fitted kitchen and restaurant. We also offer facilities for business and social events. We hope you enjoy your experience here at the Future Farm.
So here at the Martin Rican Hagen Future Farm, before we put the seed in the ground, we develop a cropping plan. A cropping plan is a program that defines what you are going to grow, where you are going to grow it, how much of it you are going to grow. You demarcate your fields, you know your farm better, so you demarcate 10 hectares, 20 hectares, you decide what you are going to grow. Your resources, look at your resources, uh, your labor, your machinery, you decide what seeds you are going to grow, you go into details of the varieties, uh, the fertilizers, your nutrient management program. So this, this program will define all of that that you have to do into the season. And this program uh, need not to be fixed or permanent. It can be revised, it can be tweaked as the season progresses. Um, so, but to have a program before the season starts, it, it's very important because it helps you to manage the stress and the chaos that may arise uh, during the season. But it also helps you to manage a lot of uncertainties. You know, with farming, a lot of things are unpredictable. We, we are subject to harsh weather conditions. And when you have a plan, at least that, that serves as a guide for what you need to do during the season. So to have a successful plan, the other thing also is um, your record keeping. You have to keep records because when you sit down to brainstorm and define a plan for the season, you need to refer to the previous season. And for you to do that, you need to have records of the previous season. What did you plant where? What were the yields? Uh, how is your crop rotation? You know the rotating of crops where you grow different crops on one piece of land. That's very important because as you are farming, you need to improve on your soils and you know that uh, different crops will interact differently with the soils. So you want to look at your crop rotation. That is important. So the previous records, you need to have that in place for you to define a very effective cropping plan for the next season. So here at the Martin Rick and Hagen Future Farm, uh, the 2021-2022 farming season, um, our cropping plan is focused on sustainability practices, which is uh, the SDG number two, if you wish. So we are looking at finding a balance between food production and preserving the environment because we, with farming, I think farmers, we have a huge responsibility of taking care of our environment because we interact with the environment on a larger scale than anybody else because of our operations. So as we as we carry on with our field operations, food production, we also have to preserve our environment. So our cropping plan for this season at the Martin Rick and Agent Future Farm, we are focusing on sustainability practices. So we are saying we are growing food, but we should also preserve the environment because this is the only way we preserve our natural resources. And the big thing is the soil because that is the huge resource for the farmer. Every seed goes in the soil. Your, your practices in the field will determine whether you are preserving the environment or you are depleting the environment. So that is very important. So Tim, this season, the 2021-2022 farming season, um, our cropping plan will be focused on uh, sustainable practices uh, because we are engaged in farming and we have the responsibility of taking care of our environment. So all the activities that we are going to do in this season, we should uh, have it in mind that we have to be sustainable. Whatever we do, we should consider the environment. So in as much as we want to be profitable we want to increase our productivity but let's ensure that as we discuss on our field operations and every other operation that we are going to do uh, let's just bear in mind that it should address sustainability because as agco as a company as well we are also focusing on sustainability as we are finding farmers solutions we are also ensuring that um, they are sustainable yeah i have a question uh, I think, yeah, this year's cropping plan sounds interesting, uh, but uh, uh, which areas are we focusing on sustainability? Okay, so uh, if we talk about, let's look at our major operations. So it starts with our land preparation because uh, that, that is the big thing with the soil and what we do with the soil. So let's look at some of um, the, 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 the land tillage practices that we are going to have. So. We'll look at tillage. Then now uh, we'll also look at um, we'll look at pest management. 
So especially with our cereals, um, I think since 2017 we've had uh, four army worms and I think we've seen this pest to be very devastating, especially in the maize crop. So everybody who is engaged in maize production, they are worrying of um, four army worms. So we have to come up with some control measures that will control the pest, but then we should also be mindful of the environment. What are we going to do that will address it will control the pest, we will have, we'll have our yields, but then we should also, whatever method we come up with, it should be also, it should be environmental friendly. So, so we should bear that in mind. And I think we can also look at um, soil improvement. So this is where our crop rotation will come in now. We have to decide where we planted what crop last season, and then we make sure that uh, we are not depleting our nutrients, we are not depleting our soils, so we have to make sure that we, we also address this. So I think if we look at this and we look at the size of the fields and the trials that we are going to do, I see most of the practices for sustainability fitting into any one of these. Because if we look at the spraying of beet in our legumes, the soya beans, the maize, they are all coming to this, the tillage, this, this cuts across all the fields that we're going to do. So this is an overview of our cropping plan for the 2021-2022 season. Uh, but please um, note that uh, this cropping plan, it addresses all farmer categories. So our trials are in categories. We have trials for small scale farmers. Uh, emerging farmers and commercial farmers. So if you look at um, our main three umbrellas of the sustainable practices that we'll be focusing on, if you look at tillage, this cuts across all farmer groups. So if you come on uh, reaping, uh, this will come on to mechanization, but it, it, it also sits very well with the subsistence or, or small holder, if you like. If you come to the strip till, this is minimum tillage and um, even a person who is using a hand hoy, uh, though I'm not encouraging that because uh, there, there's some precision that you may not achieve with that, the accuracy and land usage, but uh, it's good for you to know that as you are doing that, the future is that uh, you get precise, you get accurate because we want you to increase productivity on your small piece of land. So if you look at uh, strip till, you find that this also applies to the subsistence farmer who is using a hoy because they are only digging a hoy where they want to plant. And this is exactly what the strip till does. It opens up a furrow where your planter is only coming to place the seed. And then if you look at zero till, this is for all farmers, small scale farmers, emerging and commercial farmers. This is where you leave the land undisturbed. And like I said, this is a long term because you want to promote the microbes in the soil. And uh, it's not all crops that, um, that, that, that you need to till the land. Uh, crops like cereals, like legumes, they do very well on zero till. So zero till is for everybody, especially if you you have inadequate resources, labor, machinery. So you find that um, you cut off land preparation. You go in with zero till. So this is where you just plant direct. So some people say direct planting or zero tillage. So this is for all farmers. So, so if you look at what we are going to be doing in the season, every farmer category is taken care of. The Future Farm is really about generating knowledge and knowledge about farming. How can you make knowledge more profitable? How can knowledge work? Not just provide food on your table, but also to be a business. Because we know that farming is really the employment of over 60% of Zambians and actually over 40% of Africans. The benefits um, of having uh, mechanization on our farms, quite a number of them. Uh, one of them is uh, you have good quality of work on your farm. So to the existing farmers, uh, what is key uh, with, with farming and the future of farming is that uh, you need to be knowledgeable. We now move on to the stages in crop planning. Um, 
we have the basics that are, are in, engaged in every crop planning should have these basics. So first things first, uh, we get to know our soils. Why? Because every seed is coming into the soil. So it's important that you get to know your soil. What type of soil do you have? Uh, what is your soil composed of? And this information is going to help you with your nutrient management because you need to know if you have to add any nutrient, if you don't need to add any nutrient. And when it comes to farming, uh, farmers sometimes think that they always have to add nutrients to the soil, but it's because you, you don't know what is already in your soil. It's not actually every soil where you have to add the nutrients because some of the soils, they are well built up. They, all, they already have the nutrients. So when you are doing your, your cropping planning, you understand what soil you have, what is already in your soil, and what you have to add into your soil. And in doing this, um, you can test your soil, get your soils tested. Uh, this is a small practice which I think every farmer can do. So basic tools that we use for, 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 for sampling, you, you pick samples across the field, different points to give you a representative of the field. And uh, you make a composite sample and you take them for testing. There are various testing centers around the country for soil testing for you to understand your soil composition. So with me here is a, is a soil auger. So this auger is meant for taking soil samples. Um, if you don't have a soil auger, you can use a spade or a shovel. And um, you can use a bucket. <coughs> you can have some clear bags with you. Uh, the whole idea is for you to label your, your samples so that you are able to know which sample is from which point. So you have your auger. You have your clear bag, uh, you can have a marker. This is just to label your, your, your different samples. And then you have a bucket. This one is for making a composite sample where you, you pick your sample from uh, the one that eventually goes for testing. Okay, so. So you push it down. This is to about a depth of uh, 15 centimeters and 15 centimeters this is where most of the root crops will interact with your soil so this is the depth that you are interested in knowing what is within this 15 centimeters depth so when you pick your sample You empty this in the bucket. So you can make a pattern within the field, uh, normally a W shape, uh, reason being that you want to represent the entire field. So you can get various samples. Um, each sample, you put it in a bucket and then you mix up and pick a sample from there. Put it in a clear bag. You label it either A or B, and depending on how many samples you want to pick within the field, then you can gather your samples for testing. In ensuring that uh, your field is well represented when you are taking the samples, um, you, you can adapt the common pattern, which is the, the W shape, which um, most of the people use so you walk from one end of the field to the end of the field then you come you come back but coming outwards like making a triangle so you go to the end you you come not closer to the starting point you go again you you keep going in that manner as making a w so you want to make sure that every part of the field is representative when you take the samples So after knowing what type of soils you have, the next stage is crop selection. Deciding what crops are you going to grow and understanding from the very start uh, the usage of your crop. So if you're going to plant cereals, if you're going to plant legumes, if you're going to plant green fertilizer for your soil rotation, you, you, have, to, you have to make that decision. And when it comes to the crops, getting onto the details of varieties. 
uh, in choosing the varieties because you're already understanding what you want to achieve. So is it a long maturing variety? Is it a short maturing variety? Your location as well, where you are located. Remember, uh, for the farmers in Zambia, we have three ecological zones and this is divided according to the amount of rainfall that is received in the season. So you find that one region has low rainfall, the other region has higher rainfall. So when you are choosing your crops, you make sure that uh, the longer maturing varieties will be best suited in an area where you have more rainfall because it has longer growing season and vice versa with the short ones, they'll do very well with the areas where there's low rainfall. And uh, the varieties as well, you look at the yields because you already have a target. You set your targets from the onset. So when you look at the varieties, they have different yielding potentials. So depending on what you have to achieve, uh, look at the potential of a variety. Um, the other thing that you need to consider when it comes to choosing your crops, uh, look at the grades as well, especially for the cereals like maize. It's, it's very specific with your planter. You, you, you've looked at the machinery that you have. Uh, now, when you come to seed selection, look at the grades. When you go to buy seeds, the seed is graded in different uh, sizes. And uh, if you're not sure, you can carry your, your, your planter plate. You go with it to the seed shop where you're buying your seed and just make sure that that is the right plate for the right seed so that um, you, you, don't, you, you, you minimize on running up and down when it's time to plant and you just ensure that uh, you have the efficiency. So your next stage in uh, crop planning is uh, field operations. You have to understand what field operations you'll be undertaking in the season and um, uh, what resources you have available, what resources you have to outsource, uh, what size of fields, uh, what size of fields will actually help you in um, deciding what resources you might need to outsource or what sources, what, what resources are already available. So uh, if, you, if, your, if your field uh, requires mechanization, uh, what spraying are you going to be implementing? Do you have a sprayer? Uh, do you need to hire a sprayer? Um, do you need to, to do land preparation? Are you doing zero tillage? So all of this information will help you with um, with your field operations, you need to understand that um, the, the operations that you are going to undertake will guide you in, um, in understanding um, what, what you need to do with, with, with your operations. So understanding the, the operations that you undertake will help you in your planning. Uh, maybe you need to, to outsource labor, maybe you need to, you need to hire equipment, um, just all of that information put down and it, it's going to give you an effective plan. At least you have a clear picture of what, what you need to know with your, with your fields. So the size of your fields, the operations that you need to undertake, all of this will help you to plan, understand what resources are already available, what resources you have to outsource. Uh, yeah, so the size of the field, if it's 100 hectares, is it mechanized? Is it a subsistence and uh, we, are you going to be weeding by hand? Are you going to be using herbicides? Um, understand all of the resources and just get that into your planning just to make sure that um, when it's time to implement the operations, you know already the resources that um, you have at hand. Under a cropping plan for this farming season 2021-2022, uh, here at Martin Richard Hagen, um, the future farm, we 
we are going to look at uh, how mechanization is going to fit into that program. So number one, mechanization is a, a key product when it comes to farming. You need to mechanize your farms so that you can have high production. So we, how do we prepare our, our, our tractors and implements for, for this uh, farming uh, season? These tractors have been prepared in such a way that they are ready. We start by uh, cleaning them. After cleaning, uh, you, you inspect them and ensure that uh, everything is okay. If there's anything that is not there, you replace uh, those parts and you, you also ensure that uh, you lubricate them, especially uh, when it comes to implements like reapers and uh, strip to you, uh, to mention but a few. So these reapers, uh, these implements need to be uh, made available so that as you start to use them, there are no hiccups in the system. Um, so this tractor that is here is ready to go. Um, we also, I'm also going to talk about uh, resources. Here I'll talk about the operator himself or operators. So during off season, after harvesting of all our crops, we make sure that we conduct trainings and uh, refresher courses to our operators so that we make them uh, be uh, available at any given time and also keep them reminded of uh, what they're supposed to do and also the jobs or assignments that are there for them. So after conducting the trainings and refresher courses, we expect our operators to be efficient uh, and um, there's also high production or high productivity. You know, when you are using a, an operator who is highly uh, trained, they, they, they become qualified in that field in such a way that uh, in, in the end you have high production and you also have efficiency. They, they're also the issues of um, errors on the field when they're working, they're also minimized. So these uh, operators also become uh, highly trained in such a way that uh, they also help the company to, to yield profits. Like when it comes to fuel usage, a well-trained operator uh, uses up to between 10 to 12 percent less uh, fuel per day as opposed to one who is not properly uh, trained. So these are the things that, uh, that, uh, that we look at uh, when it comes to, to, to training our operators. So this time around we, we are set to go the operators are ready, our tractors and implements are also good to go. So I will, I will end here and also invite the, the operator to just do a test run so that you can see how efficient this machine is. Thank you very much. Here comes uh, Felix Walia. He is the operator that is coming to operate this machine, uh, trained here at Martin Richard Hagen Training and Learning Center.
Yeah, so still under cropping plan for this farming season, we have the precision planter that we are going to use. Uh, this is going to be our second year uh, at this farm, uh, Martin Rich and Hagen, a future farm, that we are going to use this planter. We used it last year and uh, the, the results were very good. So this planter, you have to hitch it onto the tractor. Um, inside, when you hitch it to the tractor, then it communicates. You know, the tractor has, has a, a, a computer where you have a display for monitoring what is happening as, as you are planting. So the, the trained operator who is uh, planting using this planter who will be checking as he is doing his assignment of planting. He is going to be looking on that screen. Uh, the screen is there to show him what he's obtaining. If he is planting well, the, it, it will show him. If there is a blockage in the system, whether of the fertilizer or the seed as he is planting, the, 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 the computer will pick it and then uh, immediately the, 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 the operator will stop and correct that uh, situation. So that is one of the uh, other advantages of using the precision planter. When it comes to depth, uh, you just set it manually at the back there. You set it manually. For the fertilizers, you have those knobs in front. Again, you set them manually. But when it comes to how many seeds that you want to plant per hectare, you use the you just key in on the screen using the tractor uh, when this thing is uh, connected. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, this is uh, the two row planter. Um, it is small when you look uh, at it, but uh, it is quite uh, uh, durable and it's good and uh, uh, perfect when it comes to using it. We've been using it since 2014 and it has given us good results. So again here, what matters is uh, uh, you mount it to the tractor and you need to have somebody who is trained to do the calibration and it will give you good results. So it's good to go. Yeah, here we have the strip till. This is one of our, our two uh, implements that we're going to use uh, this farming crop, um, I mean farming season. We have looked at the, the reaper which breaks the solid pans of our soils, but this one just cracks. It will just open up where you want to plant, and then the planter will just come there and drop the seed there. So it is a, a, a strip till. It doesn't shovel over all the soils of, of, of your field when you are, when you are using this, um, uh, this implement. This is the tractor that we're going to use under small scale and imaging farmer uh, pro projects that we have at the farm. So, we haven't forgotten about our small scale and imaging farmers. We do uh, make our, we have two different fields for small scale and for imaging farmers where we do those assignments. And then uh, it has proved that uh, a small scale farmer or an imaging farmer uh, can only do better if they use uh, machines or they mechanize their, farm, their, their farms. Because with mechanization, you can't go wrong. Remember, farming is a business. Thank you very much. We, we expect to see you as we are going to do our planting. We will talk about calibration of the planters and other information. Thank you very much. So moving on from our soils, um, our crop selection, our machines, and the, the last thing in the stage is labor requirement. Um, farmers and everybody else engaged in farming activities, you ought to understand your labor requirements. Where is more labor required? Where can you make savings on labor? Uh, what field operations are required will also help you to decide what labor is required. Is it heavy on land preparation? Is it heavy on planting? Is it heavy on crop protection? Or do you need it later in the season at harvesting? So basically, the, the, the main steps in the cropping plan that are going to address um, all the aspects that are involved in your field operations have been covered. So you, you've known what soils you have, you've done your crop selection, you've understood your size of fields and the operations that you'll be undertaking, you understand your mechanization, what equipments you have, what equipments you need to source, and then the last thing is the labor. So all in all, with a cropping plan, you, you want to 
maximize your operations you want to increase productivity you want to increase on your efficiency you've got your plan in place so basically when you hear a cropping plan it's basically what you want to grow how much you want to grow where you're going to grow it and the offtake where you're going to take it so this should already be in your plan before you actually put the seed in your ground you should already know where your crop will go after harvest The Future Farm is really about generating knowledge and knowledge about farming. How can you make knowledge more profitable? How can knowledge work? Not just provide food on your table, but also to be a business. Because we know that farming is really the employment of over 60% of Zambians and actually over 40% of Africans. The benefits uh, of having a mechanization on our farms, quite a number of them. Uh, one of them is uh, you have good quality of work on your farm. So to the existing farmers, uh, what is key uh, with, with farming and the future of farming is that uh, you need to be knowledgeable. So you have seen the video and you have been reminded on the importance of planning. That program was titled Crop Planning. But today we have Sheila. Sheila, you taught us how to plan, but you never told us the rain can delay or the rain can stop, tease us and go on holiday. Now we have planted. It's a business. We have seen risks. People are afraid. Their plants, their seed, is it going to... So how do you... How does this impact on the importance of planning to a farmer? You are the agronomist. Why is planning so important, particularly with the uncertainty? You can't control the rain, but you can control <coughs> your plants, and you can plan for no rain. Tell us. And don't tell me. Tell us. Yeah, so like we said, um, a couple of weeks on uh, crop planning. So this still remains an important component of the farming process because where we are now, I'm sure some of you are questioning whether you needed to have a plan or not, is the plan working, but it still remains an important component in your farming because uh, this allows you to put up your resources available, you look at your seeds, you look at your fertilizers, uh, you look at what you're going to grow, what crop, how much of it you grow, where you're going to grow it, and um, one of the components from the cropping plan is that um, it will help you to, to, to manage uncertainties and adjust the stress and the chaos that comes in the season. So you are able to manage all of this. But now we are like, okay, we are all faced with these uncertainties and uncertainties are things that we can't predict. And uh, weather is one of, uh, one of the uncertainties. And out of the weather component, moisture is the critical factor for the farmer and the majority, I know that you do dryland farming, a few have irrigation facilities, but most of us are into dryland farming. So the uncertainty that we are faced with is lack of moisture in this season. So the question is, uh, what do we do? So now you go back to your planning, you, you realize that when you're choosing your seeds, um, you want to understand what is the drought tolerance for this seed because all of those details should come out in your crop planning. Shiva, who do you ask these questions? You go to the shop, you go, I don't know where they buy seeds because you see, I have to repent. Now, you go and sit with the person, you know, it's like you're going across, you say, um, excuse me, drought tolerance seed. You mean people answer you? You have all this information, uh, the, 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 the common practice, and uh, I think we need to have a, a mind shift on, on this because the attitude is that you, you, you just pick up on a variety. Yes. Just the name. Is it uh, 102? Is it 300? Or oh, I want um, P40. You know, so that attitude is not good because as farmers, we talked about equipping you with knowledge. That knowledge, we are saying you need to understand your seeds. So those seeds, they'll have certain traits that we spoke about earlier. And, I uh, wish we could understand, that, underline that. You need to understand your seed. So 
That's important. Exactly. So you understand what that seed is able to do. And you find that there are different seed varieties. And mm. some of those seed varieties, they've been bred to adapt or rather um, withstand low moisture levels like what we are facing now. So in your crop planning, as you are choosing your seeds, it can be maize, it can be soybeans, it can be any other crop. But then look out for that. Spread the risk. You spread the risk because your crop is subject to weather conditions which you are not controlling. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. So it means that I can go to the shops to buy. They cost probably the same. I don't ask questions. I'll buy the wrong seed and I can cry. Exactly. And, uh, you, you, and you, I can lose money. You may have your neighbor with the same crop and then their, their seed or their crop is withstanding the same weather conditions. And somebody conditions. will say that's witchcraft. <laughs> somebody will actually say that's witchcraft. Yes, but it's just a lack of knowledge. And that is why we are emphasizing that be equipped with the knowledge because you need the knowledge to implement the farming practices. Awesome. I'm converted. So now this is the value of the Future Farmer Show. The knowledge, it's free of charge. Please, can you give us some more? The rains haven't come, so I must ask questions, understand my seed, what else? Yeah, so you understand your seed, so this you would have already done, you understand your fertilizers, so mm -hmm. that you, you've already got your fertilizers, so. What do I need to understand about fertilizers? So with the fertilizer, if you've already applied it in the soil and you have dry soils, then you know that your fertilizer is sitting in the soil because there's no activity. Yeah. It's depending on moisture. So you need not to worry. Your fertilizer is, is in the soil. As long as there's no moisture, there's no interaction with the soil. So you understand all of that. What is the fertilizer composition? How will it interact with your soil? So you understand that before you actually put it in the ground. When people say, look, I didn't go to school, this is hard work, why are you making me ask questions about this? It's, it's not really hard work, and that's why with farming, we are not asking you to, to be academic. There's no exam at the end. You are not going to write an exam, but of course, the lessons, you are going to go through the lessons through your farming practice. So, and, you, and you realize that by doing that, you're actually drawing lots of lessons from every farming season. So you need not to sit in class, you need not to worry. Get the basics, understand your seed, just what you need to know. This is the variety, this is what it's going to give you, this is how you plant it, successful planting, we talked about it. Yes. This is what, so you get all those basics, implement them and throughout the season draw your lessons and the next season you find that you would have drawn so much knowledge from the previous season, you build on it. This is the most important thing I think you've said to me just now. You are saying that even when there is no rain, that farmer is made a farmer by the experiences they go through. Exactly. So not having rain is not fatal, it is training. It is a training. It is that not having rain that makes me learn about how to farm with less with, yeah, with, with less moisture, yes. So it, it actually grows me. So the value of this, what I think is pressure now, is going to show in my, in it, my farming life. It's going to life. show because then now you understand. And uh, like I said, you get so much lessons from one season to another season. So you may have low rainfall. You understand this is what happens. This is how crops uh, perform. And uh, if you had crop diversification, that is very good because you tend to see crop performance, different crops performing differently in a, in, in a given season. So we have practical, this is what we call practical wisdom in business school. Practical wisdom is there are things you have to learn, but nobody can teach nobody you. Nobody can teach you. you so you it draws, is actually you, yeah. this stimulated environment that brings value. So what we are praying, oh, take this away, is important for me to be a master farmer. Exactly, yeah. So you master that and then you keep perfecting it, perfecting it, and you are getting better because where your neighbor would be crying over something, you know what to do. The school yeah, to learn farming is on the field. It, farming. It, it's on the field. It's by the rain. Exactly. The rain teaches you. It, it teaches you the, all the practices. Everything teaches everything you. Everything that comes up in the season, how the season plays out, you draw your lessons from and there. And year by year, new shades it, it changes it changes it because we are subject to different weather conditions so it we don't have one weather pattern one season so every season every year we are learning different lessons you know 
I have enjoyed the program already. Just this just really makes me so excited. I'm not even thinking about the lack of rain. I'm thinking about the wisdom that the lack of rain is giving us in our journey towards this. So this is where, in the developed worlds, the crisis they face makes them create new solutions, innovative solutions. If we don't face the challenges, creativity and innovation diminishes. Exactly. And, and if you look at the, 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 the agri-industry, an example of, the, of the, 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 seed, the seed sector, you find that th there's innovation going on there. Based on these conditions. Yeah, so the, the, they are working on the seed to adapt to different conditions. And then we want the farmer to also understand these different conditions. So the, the inputs are developed. We want this farmer also to be at that level where they are able to manage different weather conditions. Fantastic. You know that this is an important role why you need to have relationship with an agronomist. And in doing that, some of us may say, I can't afford an agronomist. You can get in touch with the agronomist on the website. So go check out the website for ACCO, and I'm sure you are going to find a link. By the way, you see how on ACCO pages, and you can get in touch and say, their agronomist, I've given you a hookup now, their agronomist XYZ, and I'm sure she will give you a response. So please take advantage of having an in-house agronomist to advise you. And I'm so sure she'll reply to you. Sheila, we really thank you for this. Is there anything else? Apart? You've really enriched us with wisdom today. Um, the value of knowledge in planning is so important. What else do you think we need to pay attention to in this season? What do we get out of the season? You've given us innovation, creativity comes out of this. We've given us not to panic. It's part of learning and growing. You've given us know your fertilizer, know your seed, understand it, and that contributes to successful planting. What else do you think we take out of this? Well, I'll still emphasize on the crop uh, planning. Like I said, that uh, you tweak it in the season. Okay. You know, some people think once I have a plan, I have to refer to it. It's this fixed. is what I plan. It's not fixed. You tweak it, you tweak it, and at the end, you have an actual cropping plan for a season which forms, uh, it, it becomes a basis for you to make the other cropping plan. So, so it's not just a plan, but this, you, you use this information now for your next planning season. In business, what they teach you in business is this, based on what you just said, you have a VUCA world, a volatile, um, U is uncertain, C is chaotic, A is ambiguous. You can't control it. It means that the farmer has to be nimble on their feet, flexible, adaptive, resi You can't have a fixed mindset. You can't have a fixed mindset. In planning. Yeah, but the importance with the cropping plan is that at the end, you have the actual, what you did in the season. And this forms part of your record keeping. Important for decision making. Fantastic. Yes. So it's not just a plan you implement and throw away. It's a plan that at the end you, you, you consolidate it, you, you key in actual events and practices. If you put in one kg of seed in this field, you, you have the actuals at the end of the season. And this document now is your cropping plan and it's, it's, your, it's your basis for the next management decision for your cropping plan. Where I have a challenge is you are talking a lot of Chizungu, big English, management. You know, we, we don't do all this big English. Can you speak in my language? Okay. All this record keeping, you are chasing so me the, away. So the record keeping, um, uh, in simple terms, is that um, you, you want to go back to it because when you are doing your next planning, you, you just don't want to dream things. You, you, you want to have a reference, and that should be an actual reference. It's not literature from some research elsewhere. This is what you have done. And that's why I was saying you draw lessons from your own farm to improve on your productivity. So you make reference to what you did, and the idea is, where did I go wrong? How can I do better? And then you keep improving. And remember, we're talking about seed selection and seed development and this is the process. You keep correcting the mistakes that you make in the season to improve. So Sheila, what we're going to look at now is this. And maybe we'll go talk to Namonga 
Namunga is going to tell us some things about ACCO, and then we're going to come back and I want you to talk to us. Some people have planted. Give me some, 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 give me some energy here because I've been living on, oh God, please rain. So <laughs> what happens? Some people were lazy, they didn't plant. In fact, they're celebrating now. They you see, I told you we Not shouldn't to plant. plant. <laughs> I want you to talk to the two of them. Okay. Don't go away, we'll be right back. It's the Future Farm Show. to show you another exciting spot at the Martin Regenhagen Future Farm. I know you've already started making those plans of the festive season and the Martin Regenhagen Future Farm should be your first choice when making that decision. Our farm is situated in Silverest area along Great East Road, three kilometers away from the airport roundabout. It could only take you five minutes drive to get to our destination. We have 24 units, all soft content, air conditioned, nice study table, and we also have a facility center where you can go and watch TV, you play mini soccer, we have a pool table there, we have a mini bar and of course a fully serviced laundry facility. Our room rent includes bed and breakfast, all served in the restaurants. We do have a beautiful modern restaurant with an international cuisine. For bookings, you can contact us using the number showing on the screen or you can drop us an email at info underscore aquafuturefarm at aquacorp.com. Thank you for watching and see you next week. Welcome to the Martin Richin Hagen Future Farm based in Lusaka, Zambia. The Martin Richin Hagen Future Farm is a modern state-of-the-art facility offering education and training in mechanized sustainable agriculture for farmers in Zambia and Africa. We offer facilities such as lecture rooms, student accommodation, and a state-of-the-art fitted kitchen and restaurant. We also offer facilities for business and social events. We hope you enjoy your experience here at the Future Farm. And we have seen, again, the services you can access and you can benefit from using the facilities at ACCO. Just down the road, on the way, opposite Barnes Motel, you heard that. And we continue as we come to the close of today's episode. Today's episode that looks at the challenges you face, the uncertainties in farming, and we can deal with the uncertainties. So we're going to go back to our farm specialist, Sheila, and she's going to tell us, for those that have farmed, what tips can she give? We believe the rain is going to come. We have prayed, we believe, but there are still uncertainties. What day, what time, what hour, we don't know. So what do we do? She's the specialist. And then for those that haven't farmed, reinforcing planning, what do we do? Sheila, talk to your relatives, talk to Zambia. Okay, so we have uh, scenarios. Um, we talked about uh, moisture, 
being a weather component which forms part of the uncertainties. So right now we have some people that have planted, some people that have not planted. And uh, for us at the Martin Ricken Hagen Future Farm, uh, we, we've, we've planted all our maize because you may wish to know that in the month of November, we received a total of 100 mules and that's adequate moisture that you need to, to plant. And, and we planted and we haven't had rains uh, over two weeks. So those that have not planted, of course, simple message is you wait because uh, the, the ground is dry, there's no moisture, so that won't form, form part of your successful planting. So if you haven't planted, you wait. But something to consider as well, if you haven't planted, you can still go back to your seed varieties and um, just check on, your, on your vari the varieties that you've got. Just make sure that you have a wide range of maturing periods. So you may have the medium maturing, especially for maize, because it's very sensitive with moisture. You have the medium maturing variety, you may have the short, you may have the long. So you spread that risk because now we are in December and sometimes the rains will cut off in March. So you want to be sure that the seeds that you have. Um, Can I ask, thank you very much. Not everybody's planting maize. Some are planting tomato, some are planting cow peas, some are planting different things. We seem to love maize alone. We give too much attention to maize. We give too much attention to maize and soya beans because these, they tend to also get a larger portion of farmland. Okay. So if, if we don't perform very well on a bigger farmland, th th then that is a huge loss for the, for the farmer. So when we talk about maize, we talk about soya beans, we talk about wheat in winter, they get a huge chunk of land. Tomatoes, we don't hear people farming 100 hectares of tomatoes, okay. but then we hear people farming 1,000 hectares of, of maize. So the emphasis is there because that, that is that's where... That's the focus. That, that, that is the focus. And that's where the biggest so, risk is. The biggest risk is. So if you look at the, the, the vegetable growers, most of them, you, you find that um, it's under irrigation and, and the moisture... Uh, we are controlled. talking about really, it, 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 it's, it's not affecting them because it's not rain fed. Okay. So it's not that we've forgotten about them, but you find that their practices are usually different from the main summer crops. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so that is uh, with the maize. So, so you look at your varieties if you haven't planted, try to spread that risk so that um, you, you, you just stand a chance of not affecting your yields because... Um, we may have late planting December, most of the times this time, most of the people would have already planted. But if you haven't planted, still waiting for the rains, just look at your seed varieties again and just make sure that you spread that risk. If you have already planted, especially maize for soya beans, soya beans is very sensitive with moisture. Remember in our successful planting episode that we, we, we had a couple of weeks ago, we told you that uh, moisture for soya beans, soya beans wants to absorb at least 50% of moisture when you plant it. So you find that if you've already planted, maybe you planted at the time you had moisture in the ground, it absorbed the moisture, but then that was just enough to imbibe, but not enough to take out the root and to, to, to pull through the soil. So, so has that person lost their seed? Uh, so that one, uh, th they have to make the assessment. Yeah, they have to make the assessment. Um, sometimes it might withstand because we, we just look at the soil surface, but sometimes you find that depending on your um, practices in your soil, you might find that your soil is, is able to conserve moisture. So, yeah, so, so they have to make that assessment. And then uh, for maize, uh, maize withstand, I think maize will be slightly stronger than maybe in simpler terms, stronger than the soya beans when it comes to moisture, it's able to withstand and adapt the, the, the dry spell. But uh, one thing also to look out for, especially for the maize growers, um, if you've already planted and uh, your field, you know, the weeds will also come up. So when you plant, you've got rainfall, the weeds are going to come up. Competing so one of, with the same moisture. Yeah, competing with the cell moisture because there are some weeds that are favorable in arable fields. They, they like to grow where we grow our crops. Yeah, so, so one way to also manage moisture now for those that have already planted and especially with the cereals like maize is that uh, do not apply any herbicide because there's no moisture to move your herbicide. So that will be a waste. Those that are weeding, do not weed. 
because you want you want to manage uh, ev evapotranspiration. So this is the loss of moisture, moisture. from the yeah from so the weeds help yeah to so the, the weeds will, will help to maintain. So oh, you do nothing now. So if you've already planted your maize is up, the weeds are also up. Do nothing. It's recommended that you don't do anything because you're, if you apply herbicide, it will be wasted. It won't move. It, it won't be able to move. It's depending on moisture to move. And then if you are weeding, uh, you hold on because once you clear the weeds, you, you actually promote... Uh, you've opened you, your surface to evaporation. Yeah, and then uh, you, you actually cause wilting because then now you have more heat units coming to your, to your maize and then there's no moisture. You know, all through this program, all I've been saying is, thank God I watched it. Because just being here has helped me a lot. This is so, I don't know, beyond words. Thank you so much for this. I feel this has helped. I hope the farmer there feels this has helped. This has been brilliant for me. And I'm so grateful for your time. Well, we have come to the end of our show. Sheila, do you have any more thing? I don't want to cap you at all to stop you. This is really good for me. Uh, well, my last words is that um, the, the season has just started. So don't give up. Uh, don't get discouraged. We are waiting for the rains and we'll still get on it. Now, you told us you had 100 ml of rain. So look into the crystal ball. When is rain coming? Tell us, the, when is rain coming? The, the rains will come. So, well, I hear a few parts of Zambia are receiving rainfall, but yes, generally, yeah, but generally, the, the rains will come definitely. Any rain this week? Next week, Wednesday. No, no, no. This week is Sunday. You mean next week again? <laughs> next week, Wednesday. You, you've heard it. She has the crystal ball. She's prophesying, not me. I know the rains will come. We will see you again on the Future Farmers Show on the same station, on the same platform. Don't forget, you can get this on YouTube, God Ministries TV. You can get it on Facebook, God Ministries Global. And you can follow and get all the information from Akko Future Farm website in Zambia. And we're here to serve you. So please continue to watch this program. It has been really wonderful today. Sheila, thank you. You outdid yourself today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> we will see you next week on the same program. God bless you. Have a brilliant week. The Future Farm is really about generating knowledge and knowledge about farming. How can you make knowledge more profitable? How can knowledge work? Not just provide food, on your table but also to be a business because we know that farming is really the employment of over 60 percent of zambians and actually over 40 percent of africans the benefits um, of having a mechanization on our farms quite a number of them uh, one of them is uh, you have good quality of work on your farm So to the existing farmers, uh, what is key uh, with, with farming and the future of farming is that uh, you need to be knowledgeable. <music>